So the president, as part of the launch on warning policy, has six minutes. I guess can't launch for six minutes, but at six minute mark from that first warning, the president can launch. And that was one of the most remarkable details to really nail down for this book when I was reporting this book and talking to Secretary of Defenses, for example, who are the people who advise the president on this matter, right? You say to yourself, wait a minute, how could that possibly be? And so let's unpack that, right? So in addition to the launch on warning concept, there's this other insane concept called sole presidential authority. And you might think in a democracy, that's impossible, right? You can't just start a war. Well, you can just start a nuclear war if you're the commander in chief, the president of the United States. In fact, you're the only one who can do that. And we can get into later why that exists. I was able to get the origin story of that concept from Los Alamos. They declassified it for the book. Um, but the idea behind that is that nuclear war will un unfold so fast, only one person can be in charge, the president. He asks permission of no one, not the secretary of defense, not the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, not the U.S. Congress. So built into that is this extraordinary speed. You talk about the six-minute window. And some people say, oh, that's ridiculous. How do we know that six-minute window? Well, here's the best sort of, you know, hitting the nail on the head statement I can give you, which is in President Reagan's memoirs, he refers to the six-minute window. And he says, he, he calls it irrational which it is. He says, how can anyone make a decision to launch nuclear weapons based on a blip on a radar scope? His words, to unleash Armageddon. And yet that is the reality behind nuclear war. Just imagine sitting there, one person, because a president is a human being, sitting there, <laughs> just got the warning that Russia launched. You have six minutes. You know, I, I meditate on my mortality every day, and here you would be sitting and meditating, contemplating not just your own mortality, but the mortality of all the people you know, loved ones. Just imagining, like what, what would be going through my head is all the people I know and love, like personally, and knowing that there'll be no more, most likely. And if they somehow survive, they will be suffering and will eventually die. I guess the question that kept coming up is, how do we stop this? Is it inevitable that it's going to be escalated to a full-on nuclear war that destroys everything? And it seems like it, it will be, it's inevitable. In the position of the president, it's almost inevitable that they have to respond. I mean, one of the things I found shocking was how little apparently most presidents know about the responsibility that literally lays at their feet, right? So you may think through this six-minute window, I may think through this six-minute window, but what I learned, like for example, former Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta was really helpful in explaining this to me because before he was SecDef, he served as the um, director of the CIA. And before that, he was the White House chief of staff. And so he has seen these different roles that have been so close to the president. But he explained to me that when he was the White House chief of staff for President Clinton, he noticed how President Clinton didn't want to ever really deal with the nuclear issue because he had so many other issues to deal with. Mm. Um, and that only when Panetta became Secretary of Defense, he told me, did he really realize the weight of all of this? Because he knew he would be the person that the president would turn to were he to be notified of a nuclear attack. And by the way, it's the launch on warning. It's the, it's the, the ballistic missile seen from outer space by the satellite. And then there also must be a second confirmation from a ground radar system. Mm -hmm. But 
in that process, which is just a couple minutes, everyone is getting ready to notify the president. And one of the first people that gets notified by NORAD or by STRATCOM or by NRO, these different parties that all see the early warning data, one of the first people that's notified is the Secretary of Defense, as well as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, because those two together are going to brief the president about, you know, sir, you have six minutes to decide. And that's where you realize the immediacy of all of this is so counter to imagining the scenario. And again, all the presidents come into office, I have learned, understanding the idea that de of deterrence, this idea that we have these massive arsenals of nuclear weapons pointed at one another, ready to launch, so that we never have nuclear war. Mm. But what we're talking about now is what if we did? What if we did? And what you've raised is like this really spooky, eerie subtext of the world right now because many of the nuclear armed nations are in direct conflict with other nations. And for the first time in decades, nuclear threats are actually coming out of the mouths of leaders. This is shocking. 